Well, banker and he's a filmmaker. Yeah. Do you think it's wise to take a credit to shoot a film? <laughs> I want honest answers, not those who answer. I'm putting you on the spot a lot. What do you say about that? I think that? it's subjective. Why would say <laughs> Politically what? correct. <laughs>
you know already in front of you that is laid out like mm. you're paying for equipment you're paying for vehicles you're paying for you know crew members you're, there's there's like so much cost that you don't even want to be you don't want to be having hey hey like where's the money going to come from the money going to come from <laughs> this is so once you have like your 70 percent you know once projects have started you can still um you can still be on pilot mm. mode mm. of some sort cruise like, control auto, auto, pilot, uh, auto, auto pilot. pilot but that beginning you like to know what they hated the ground running they hate the ground, <laughs> hate the ground running <laughs> Run it away, exactly. Hit in the ground, running, running. Run you need to have that stability of funds. You need to have that insurance of funds. And like you said, like money grow wings. Investors can come with stories. They can be like one big damage on sets that mm. you don't even know how you're going to recover. You know, like there's, there's so much, so much chaos that. <laughs> the one I want to say we, we're concerning this funded because I think and this is not in the book because when we wrote the book, this problem is not existing. There's been this heavy um, depreciation of our currency in our nation, and it's affected a lot of indie filmmakers. Because so I'm about to start a project. When when we did the budget of the film, the budget of the film was at 80 million naira. Mm. When we're about to execute. The budget shot up to 140 million. This is even with a lot of knife to our throat because we didn't want to look very wayward. Now the 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 EPs asked the question: Why are we from 80 to 140? And that question for me marveled, mm. stunned me because who in this nation doesn't know doesn't know, doesn't doesn't know that happening. a kilo of meat that used to be a thousand naira is hitting about four thousand naira now? Yeah. That Uber from Ikeja to Lekki that used to be 1,005, 2,000 naira is about 10,000 naira now without soil. Mm -hmm. So why would you ask that kind of question? Because film, make film look like film is in the, in the, is in the air. It's not in the air. Mm. It is, we're still going to pay for Uber, pay for, pay for buses, pay for fuel, pay for food, pay for the only thing different so that we're using it for creative yeah. reasons. Having said that, so I've started something personally. So I would create a budget. And this is me, I'm not trying to play down on an era. But till our government do the right thing that they're supposed to do, I'm not a banker or an economist. I freeze my, the value of my project in a currency I can trust. Mm. So I did it for another project I'm doing with Nicole, the director of this thing. We created a budget. The budget was an amount. Let me give an example. Like it's a hundred million naira. The day I finished the budget, the project, I looked at how much a hundred million naira is in dollars, and I froze the total in that in amount currency, that yeah. currency so whenever they want to come and execute the project mm -hmm. i will go to that day's exchange rates <laughs> yeah and convert it back to that's naira. That's, so yes. they pay me the naira equivalent of that dollar, that dollar yeah, yeah so i can stay safe because you want to buy a car today a car is telling you to bring 10 million naira. not because that car is ten thousand dollars that car might be seven thousand dollars but seven thousand dollars is ten million naira now mm -hmm. if the dollar goes back to five 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 hundred per dollar it goes down to five million mm -hmm. so if i freeze it that way even if the dollar the naira appreciates so well yeah you won't give me less than what you should have given Didn't, to me yeah but but just have to have a validity period yeah because one of the chapters of this book we're not going to talk about in this podcast is the experience of 1230 mm. where we made a film <laughs> and we didn't have enough funding to finish the film and by the time we got the film the full funding the kids we were shooting with had grown and become mm. adults <laughs> so till today we cannot finish the film and if only we knew that we cannot operate without complete funding like you said at least a majority mm -hmm. of the funding what i do is that you have to fund principal photography mm. you might not fund post-production post -production. Yeah. but you can fund principal photography yes yeah. let's be able to start and wrap mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. have That's all your it. drives in the hard drive yes. all your files in the hard drive then now go into start doing marketing and marketing and that, that can now say okay give me six months you can keep it in hard drive nobody's gonna at least you have your shots it's just release date that can be mm. but let me come to you Hugo. talking about budget talking about funding you've been on the journey of funding a film and i like it because it puts you in the real context that's why i had to ask mm -hmm. character to bring you here how how would you describe funding creative and film business in Nigeria from your own personal experience? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in terms of funding, <clears throat> I think I'd like to put it as, um, you know, from, from, from what we were saying earlier about the necessity of having these funds on ground even before the project even gets started. Because the truth is, it, it, this is not just like any other project. It's a creative project because it has to deal with a lot of creativity involved in it. And you would notice that if 
if you have to if you're dealing with something that is this creative you shouldn't be under pressure of finances there is there's this True. imagine you wake up one day and you don't even know what to eat i feel like those kind of things will affect your creative how creative mm -hmm. can you totally. be yeah. if you're really mm -hmm. hungry so in, in in terms of budgeting in terms of the other question you asked you you i feel like anyone uh, the investment in film i don't I don't think it's the same with the investment in real estate, I right? Oh, that is real. <laughs> that is real. It's real. But yeah, it's not real. It's, it's something that's a bit abstract. Abstract, like it's up there. So you would see that uh, someone who's investing in film needs to be invested in the project. Now, maybe why are you interested in this project, or why should you come into this project? So in that aspect, even a producer who is trying to you know come up with a project and try to approach um, like a financier, someone who's going to finance the project. You need to find um, a, a, a something to relate your project with mm -hmm. who you want to do this funding. So, for instance, um, maybe you are, are you approaching an organization. What are their core values? Like, what really matters to this organization, mm -hmm. right? And the project you're coming with, is this something they can have as part of their, maybe their corporate social responsibility? Is this something they can bring in under that mm -hmm. arm to be able to, you can say, okay, we are supporting you guys for this project. Let it be part of our CSR and all of this thing. So um, we need to be able to find that synergy between uh, the project itself and how it aligns with who we are looking at to fund that project. Another way could be another way of looking at it could be in terms of um, preparing even in your pitch decks, for instance. Right, you want to pitch to someone. You need to know where to focus on. Mm. The the nature of creative projects can give it different sides. Like people say, there are different sides to a truth. So the nature of a project, creative project can give it different sides. So what side of this project should I, um, you know, advance towards this particular um, um, investor to be able to seal this project? Just to help you push a little, just to dig a little deeper. You're a banker and you're a filmmaker. Yeah. Do you think it's wise to take a credit to shoot a film? <laughs> I want honest answers, not test against us. Do you think it's, mm. I'm putting you on the spot a lot. Do you have what do you say about I think that? it's subjective. Why would say? <laughs> Politically what? correct. <laughs> what I'm saying is subjective. It's what kind of project is that? Is it is it a time bound project? Because the truth is, the moment you take your credit, it's already running, mm. right? And um, in terms of filmmaking, you need to have your pre production days. You need to have your principal photography. You need to have your post production. It takes a while to even get it to market, right? And it, it could take a while for it to you know get you the returns that you need. Mm. So, in terms of um, borrowing to finance a film, um, like one of like one of the things you we mentioned, or one of the things I learned from your master classes, first of all, try to get it from somewhere that it is free. My brother, if you, mm. can, <laughs> if you can't get it, yes. if you can't. can get it somewhere for free, <laughs> yes. go for it. If you can't get it for free, then you can think about borrowing before you can think of um, you it's know also think of stealing legally it. stealing, legally because stealing. This is it, a progressive. Right? So something able to be in then. I was in church on Sunday and I had three of my three of my friends who are money lenders. That, that, that's what they are. They run like, you know, small, investors, uh, investors, but uh, <laughs> venture capitalists, but the rich that they give money, they collect money back. And they were literally arguing about who would fund my next project. It didn't hit me till about 30 minutes into the talk. I realized I was being pitched to. So I say, no, me, I'll do 3%, I'll say 4%. They were literally arguing, even shouting, I said, hey, come on, Chris. We will run this thing. And I said, wait a minute. While other people Five years there. ago. You were the one looking for I was looking for all these people. <laughs> go, yeah. <laughs> people wanted to do this. Now, these guys are people who could do real estate, could do anything. But they've been watching the track record of our business and like, come on. On our nose, Chris is making money. Mm. <laughs> so mm. the, the point is, I think it's a level of investment you get to where you can go for credit. At the beginning, stay with family and friends. Mm. Like you said, stay with the free, stay, stay. Oh, money that's also come with too much responsibility. Yeah. Because you take money from a bank and your film has delays, either you rush the film and bring out video, video care film, or you stake out time and now the profit you are supposed to make will now go to the bank, that's if not with debt. So you don't even have the and you don't think about creativity that when you put pressure on the on the heart, it blocks the mind. Blocks it blocks the mind. So you really don't want to get to that place where you have a 10 million naira that's going to be 10 million naira in another two years and you are making a thing for 15 million naira. So you won't have 5 million naira debt to your own. So I actually agree with you when you say look for the free ones first. Mm. But why I asked that question was to bring it back to us is um, another thing I think apart from us having funding before the film is films are not properly 
measured or qualified. You, you took it right yes, out so, of my yeah. mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so Assessed. If it's 10 million, what is... No, the film needs 10 million dollar cash. Cash. But you being you, staying where you stay, working for where you're working, using your laptop, using your time, using your energy, using your resources, your social network and all of that, has to be worth something. So one thing this book teaches us to do is to divide our film quantification or mm. film worth quantification mm -hmm. into three, which we call actual budget, which the production budget, mm -hmm. and the working, working budget. budget. Mm -hmm. The difference in the, the actual and the production is what we call tangibles and intangibles. Tangibles. Tangibles are things, as the word says, you can talk. You can. So I'm paying Victor 10,000 Naira to act in my film. That's a tangible thing. I give yeah. Victor 10,000, he comes and he shows. But now, I have been chasing Ugo for three years to come and co-fund this film with me. Mm. I've traveled to his, his um, village for Christmas just to be able to get attention. I went for his son's demi ceremony just to get attention. Those things... Mm. Even as much as they're not direct transactions, mm -hmm. tangible yeah, but they were so. part of what gave me his attention for he gave me the tenure yeah. there. Mm. I have to be able to cater for that in Those my... Because for me to say it's the only money I paid to Victor that is the only money for the film, that is false. Because there were other parts True. of it. You have to account yeah. for those True. things, even though you cannot really find them anymore. And even the fact that I'm a producer with 15 years, 20 years, 10 years, 7 hours experience, that also counts for something. Mm -hmm. There are errors I made in my previous film that will help this film be better. Mm -hmm. How are you going to pay money for that? Mm. Now, I have a car, a laptop, and a phone, so that makes my work easier. How do you quantify that? Those. Now, even the story I want to tell happened to my elder brother when he lost his whatever, whatever. How do you convert the experience? How do you, how do you convert that experience to? Because if I did the experience with my brother, I will be able to tell the story the way I'm telling it. For example, I did a movie once where the director wanted to shoot an explosion scene. And he had been in an explosion scene before where he literally escaped death. It is life. He was able to recreate it in the film because he had passed. How much did you pay that director to? for that experience mm -hmm. that you almost died yeah. in mm -hmm. to be able to so those things are intangible so yeah. it's that for me to make it create a world when i take away all those intangibles i'm now left with the actual budget yeah which is what cash we need but that this cash again needs to be has some margin the bank has yeah, yeah. now i meet a jira tell you i want to shoot with you tomorrow Joe says it's five thousand now when i go and just landlord decrease salary increase mm -hmm. house rent his staff ask for more salary i come back and say you have five thousand no it's not seven five. No, this is not joke. I want to buy dollar. Mm -hmm. say, wait, 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 wait. It's not seven. <laughs> it's on the increase. Oh, so. How do you come back to your EP to say, I'm sorry, mm. the money you gave to me was it makes me look interesting. So you must have factored yes, it so. into some kind of exactly. But now I take away all those, I call them shavings, those excesses, and that brings me to my working budget. So when I remove those extra margins and just put a five or ten percent contingency, then I have a working budget. Now, what I say to people is when I'm going for sponsorship with all these brands, I go to them with my uh, 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 production book. Mm, yeah. That says to them, this is what my production is worth. Yeah. So they, are, they, know, they know that they're paying for my visit to his village, mm. my, 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 my gift for his car, and everything yeah. I've done. But when I'm coming to my EPs, I come to them with the cash required, which is now the second budget. But what I give to my line producer is the working budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when the line producer fails, which happens a lot of times, I have something to fall oh, back, back on. Not necessarily going back to my EP. So let's assume you're the line producer, mm -hmm. you're the EP, and you're the sponsor. So you have given me sponsorship. I take away the intangibles. I come to you, I say, this is what you're putting in. I come to you, I say, this is what you should work with. Mm. I think that is very important because that's the only way we can actually have a proper structured Balance. production without having all this. Because I think it's it. incompetent for you to be coming back to me and say, we need more money, we yeah. need more money. That shows you didn't know what you were doing at first. Yeah, true. The pilot tells you we can fly, it's, it's cloudy, but we can fly. Because mm -hmm. you are seeing that, okay, the things that can go wrong, I can navigate. Mm. If he says you can fly and he goes and he crashes, God forbid, they will hold him responsible yes. because he said he could can fly. fly. Yeah. Is he God? No, but he said he could he fly. Could fly. The producer said it will fly. He can't change his mind halfway. Mm. I say, but you can see Tinubu just change the problem. Mm. Ah, you can see what's happening with the dollar now. Ah, you can see. Yeah. Those are flimsy excuses you knew before you went in. Now, I want to ask a question to you guys. Fame worth versus fame cost. My favorite quote. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's shed more light on that. Because we've spoken about it already on the budgeting, but I think we need to wrap up. But let's look at that. How does that, when you think about that, what does that do for you? And how have you been able to internalize that? The value of your film against the cost of your film. Let's start with Victor. 
Okay, so so like like you said, it has a lot to do with measuring tangibles and intangibles. So you have to. There are certain things you can't buy. You can't you can't pay for loyalty. You can't pay for commitment. You can't pay for ownership. Now ownership in the sense of going back to manpower. You can't pay for inspiring people to do the work, right? Like, like it's theirs. Now if, for instance, the the last project. I'll go back to the last project that we did, <laughs> right? So you have a guy, you have a bus driver who is probably being paid by a boss. He has a boss, rather, who is paying him. And then you have to go and pick up a piece of equipment that you need um, for a scene at 2 a.m. Paying him whatever it is, maybe you're paying him 15K or 20K a day. Paying him 20K a day is not enough for that guy to lose sleep at 2 a.m. and drive all the way to Sri Lanka, shooting on the island or somewhere in the mainland to pick up this piece of equipment. There has to be something more. Mm. He has to have some kind of loyalty to you, commitment to you, right? Or some kind of respect mm. that he, you have, you know, given him or allowed him to, to see in you. Mm. So this goes back to what the value of your film is because there are a lot of things that make up a film. Let me bring it home. So there was a scene <laughs> in... <laughs> there, there's a scene in Living in Bondage, the scene where, um, um, I call him Mr. Ramsey, so forgive me, mm. where, Mr., where our lead character, Richard Williams, was, was speaking different languages mm -hmm. in his, in his office. Man. Now, that office was taken from scratch, like, empty. Built, like empty from scratch. Mm -hmm. So in the midnight, while the BTS, ah, the BTS was trying to record and stuff, it just dawned on me. My dad is an art collector. Like the production designers mm. needed more things to fill the room. Mm. And it just dawned on me. Ah, ah, in my house, we have plenty artworks. artworks. My dad is an art collector. And at 1 a.m. in front of Mr. Steve, I just called my dad. Hello, daddy. Um, I need artworks. At first, it was panic. It was like, what's going on? What's going on? I said, no, nothing. No, I just want my work to look better. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Now, if we put that in your in your budget, in your budget and that yeah. day we got like we a boss more. of a boss of art. Her salary would was enough to rent half of those things. Yes. Just to put the context that's, of the balance. That's, that's what it is. Do you understand? So we had like a room. The room came alive. There were eagles, horses, artworks like bronze sculptures do you understand mm. that if you were to go to like an art gallery be, to rent them mm. it would be mad another, another thing is when we're doing choke when we're doing choke we need a church right we need a church to shoot the film mm. we know okay compared to today chokes budget is ridiculously impossible <laughs> right yeah it's ridiculously <laughs> impossible <laughs> right <laughs> do you understand so but when you look at the film called choke today if someone tells you it was shot for a hundred million, you will you, believe it. You will believe most, and say it's my most traveled film, right? Date. But now we got the church because one person was an alumni of a school. Yeah. So, but you can't pay for it. That no, no, but they are not even going to. You can't pay for it because they don't yeah. take money. They're not going to tell you, okay, come and pay. If you pay hundred k, two hundred k, one million for the church, the church is worth it. Which brings me to something. You know, sometimes when we mention budget, people will be like. All these people now, so so they could just mm, they call the million, they call million, million, just they call million. million. But we also have to understand that um, there's a language with money. You have to be able to measure, yeah, put place in, value. yes, place put value metrics to mm. what you see on screen. You have to be able to put metrics to it, like oh, they built an art gallery from set from the scratch. Mm. What's the cost of an actual art gallery? Do you understand? When you look at the art pieces, the placements, the colors, everything. Those things have metrics, mm. you know. In our in our zeal as producers, we are very creative. It looks mm. very nice, but we don't quantify, quantify it. those things. And that's what makes our So the guy that brings the money for that project, let's just leave the money as a process or mm -hmm. choke. The person who brings that money, when the money comes back, we pay back because brings big money, pay everybody's mm. salaries, mm -hmm. but yeah. we don't pay you for that access. For that, yeah, for, that for the pay. access. So and that for me is liquid of value. Not that you maybe okay, you do that because it's your responsibility to do that. Yeah. That thing that you've done, calling your dad by 1 a.m. or calling your old school, your old bus station to get that deal, was What's something working? that you think you can't come back tomorrow yes. to use it for yourself. To use it again, yeah. Yes. yes. That becomes the guy you've collected that that, that favor. That favor. 
So it should amount to something for you, but most times we don't put that into in the value. Don't think, we don't think about into it. like we don't measured think about value. It's that big budget where everything tangible or intangible has to be captured. Mm. So should we, as filmmakers, should we say the movie should actually, the worth of the movie should be greater than the cost, or the cost being greater than the worth? My quote is: If the worth, if the if the worth of your project production is equal to the cost, then you are a failed producer. Mm. A great creative producer has the worth of a project Bet. larger, far, far, far larger, larger. Yeah. than the cost. I always like to use the same living in as an example. When people tell me the film looks so glamorous, so expensive, mm. and I say it to Mahavuli that the most expensive things in that film were free. Were free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. The, so the things that make it look like a big film was, you know, it's, it's easier for a rich man to give you his car than for a poor man to give his house or mm. give his bike. When you tell the poor man, give me a bike, you say 100,000, 10,000, mm. one error. Mm. Because the poor man doesn't understand that magnanimity of, uh, you know, they're not very generous people. Yeah. That's why they're poor. Their hands are closed. But if man understands that, how much are you going to pay me for my road How much do you have? Take it. <laughs> just don't spoil it. Don't scratch it. My mm. come That's what I've seen. I've gone to his house to shoot before a short film in Kano. When I got there, it was a Sunday morning. The woman wrote a note on her fridge and said, guys, I made lunch for you in the cooler. Drinks are chilled in the fridge. Please enjoy yourself. Just wash the plate when you're done. Hmm. She gave us a house free of charge. Then she cooked hmm. and put drinks for us. Hmm. That's wow. what the big man gives you house to. Hmm. But poor man, we want to eat your set food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's so true that I'm telling you to leave your house. Like so it's, that's, it's a very so. The, 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 the point is, you need to dig deep to find that value. But which I think a lot of producers do. But we do not value the value. value. Enough. Yes. To make a report for ourselves. Of yeah. So if you're going to rent a private jet in the film, how much is it going to cost you? Maybe ten thousand dollars. And you just push it away. I don't think you're doing the person who did you a favor, favor justice mm -hmm. by making that favor. They gave us a jet, fell the jet, the jet took off, went around for like fifteen minutes and landed. For that. Swelling. Swelling. <laughs> the, 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 the staff. You. And you say they don't just that's that's unfair. That's Yes. It's favor, the person mm. will give you every favor. So, as a professional, you need to account for every couple, whether it is paid for or not. But people should know that this amount of money came in. You went to a church to shoot and tell you that their members would be extras for you. You just thank you, sir. Mm. Give a special thanks. You should account and say, St. Stephen's Anglican Church gave us a, a what do you call it now, a favor that was worth this amount of money. Yes, exactly. In fact, I'm doing a project now and I told my head of admin that you should come on set. I want to be able to quantify how, how many people we had on this set. I want to quantify how much they earned from us. Mm -hmm. When you give you a report at the end of the day, you can say, we have made 17 films that had 17 million people. Mm -hmm. that's, paid. that's how yeah. banks and all these other people work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Why banks don't give us loans? Because they don't see our paperwork. All those. Mm -hmm. Everything's in the air. The film sweet. Mm -hmm. sweet. The film sweet is good, but... The metrics. Yeah. The metrics, yeah. When, when, when the yeah. metrics came to Nigeria, the major problem they had a lot of producers that they couldn't see metrics. So you have to find people who had organized structures like the Kula of Alliance and the Moa mm. because this was had run a structure that had worked over the years. They had paper, all of us that were doing film from our uh, ATM <laughs> card. Mm. We had nothing to show. Yeah. People now have to go and start restructuring their companies and doing like, 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 like to be able to fit in. Um, so a lot of producers, you know, we, unlike you, that have like an engineering background, a lot of producers come from like an art art background where mm. numbers are like, Ah, it'd be like magic. What's that thing? What's that thing? I, don't, I don't know. I think I think it's a box. I think it's a box. Not shut down. I think it's a box from school because but in um yeah, but sometimes creativity it's a box is not from in school. numbers. <laughs> yes, but I also feel like teachers shut down. Teachers just shut people because the first time I knew I, I, I knew mathematics was in hundred level first semester when we had to do like these um, general courses where you have to do mathematics well, you, mm. what, and i i passed it i was like I so, I can. so i can't math math so i can do this thing you get? Call your so, so you've been you've been you've been shut down you know when you say art class art class all this mm. yeah and it makes it there's looks, a way uh, they make it look okay as if if you don't pass mathematics yeah. 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 yeah and it's for me the reason why i even brought that up is as a producer, I know how to learn the language of money. Like, mm -hmm. learn... Say that again. Learn the language of money. <laughs> learn... Money talks. Because... Learn the language of money. Learn how to talk to investors. Because th there's a heart with which we make films where we are like, ah, yes. Yeah. We talk with emotions <laughs> and passion <laughs> without, <laughs> without, <laughs> without <laughs> evidence. <laughs> without <laughs> evidence. <laughs> so, me, I, I know how to sit down and tell myself that, ah, you are passionate, though. 
But, but no, when it comes to this body, keyword, you will not make it. You know, and those were like hard conversations where I had to call myself. And maybe because of the circle I was in, I had a friend who told me that your budget is shit. You need to mm. go back to the drawing board. And I, oh. I was like, hmm, hmm. You, you know, he's, he's right. Don't even argue, you know. True. And I had to tell myself, you need to learn the language of money. Exactly. When it comes to money, you're talking with numbers, you're talking percentages, you're quantifying the intangibles. You know, so as a producer, you're functioning maybe between the heart and the brain. Mm. And when it comes to the money, mm. you have to switch. You have to know when to switch and be like, no, 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 mm. no, no, mm. no. True. This is the budget. This is what we're working with. Oh, my investor. Mm. Oh, we had this so, so, so percent and all that. There's a, there's a switch that we have yeah, to accept. Have to. So it have, it's very important because, I, you know, I also have a background in banking. But I'll tell you, but I'll tell you that, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I interact, as much as I was interacting with numbers and customers and, and, and all that, and then clients, the first real interaction I had with numbers was when I made my first film, which was long sleeves and short film. That was the first time I actually sat down and did an Excel sheet with numbers, right? As small as the film was, the only reason it worked was because it was interpreted in numbers. It were, if all producers can have it in their heads that you have to be able to interpret the numbers you have on paper mm -hmm. to reality because that's what your gaffer is he's a number your location is a number mm -hmm. there everybody you see everything you see is a figure mm. right until you think about it that way say no i know sabine master i'm not right and i just tell me and, and, you, and you know that you when <laughs> when you I'm know like your numbers, time, yeah. it helps you interact with your investors yes. there's something yes. there's, yes. there's a way you talk about money they will already know that you so, don't you don't have a hang of it yeah. so <laughs> so, no. so it's good to have those numbers in your you know in the palms of your hand <laughs> if you're not a number person then you need to yeah. have somebody who is a number person to be able to look at those things find it. i'll tell you how will you sell it's, it's a shame that we talk about a, a partnership in manpower, which is something mm. I always advise. So if you know you're not a numbers person in film, find a numbers person yeah, you can trust. Mm. So you both of you can work, even I don't know about trust, but both of you can work together. Mm -hmm. Because it's show business. You know, so so people don't know that I started off as a creative, as a writer. Mm. And I like to say it nowadays, but I want people to know that I'm creative. <laughs> <laughs> so this thing, this thing you're doing, this thing you're doing. This this thing you're doing. This is just, so I became this out of the need. <laughs> for us to have a bridge between mm. this creativity and, and this that. business. Mm. And we understand that the, the investors are found out in Nigeria are interested in two things. Their money and you. Mm. Yeah. Investors are cardly They're not passionate about your project. Yeah. Cardly. You are talking, they're watching you, seeing your body language. They can invest how much do you believe in this thing? Ah, but this guy believes in this thing. Let me support him and see how far he goes. Exactly. They really are not hearing anything. Going, rah, rah, rah. It's the first thing film in the world. Mm -hmm. It's the first thing with uh, mm -hmm. it is Emma and, uh, and uh, Jennifer together in one film. They are not hear those trash. They want to be sure that this twenty million you are collecting, the money can come out. They will not. You will not collect and go to Dubai tomorrow and they see you mm -hmm. posting on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Dubai thing. Dubai chilling. Dubai chilling. <laughs> but seriously, I don't think. Matter. I think that. I think that. Come on, come on. No, no. Before we even pass, I think that once you collect money, eh? Even if you're not, the money with which you travel to Dubai with is not, not the project's money. I think that's a, it's just common well, sense. Why are you low. Yes, until after the Yes, after the Why did you go with your money? money. <laughs> when they give you that money, they bought your time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You're not spending their money in Dubai. You're spending their time, their time. in Dubai. In Dubai. moment you have collected that money, until which you is like a blood covenant, us. you need to deliver for the job. If you knew you're not ready for the money, mm, don't have to. Don't that take As he sends a message, <laughs> I said, oh, but you just say you're going to do this. Computer, I give you 10 million in the money. And I see that's what you have to do. You have the money before I give you the money. You're a slave to you. What do you mean? Like, I'm going to check in. If it's not a constant lifestyle, like I have a partner, Charles of Play, who lives the lifestyle life. No investor can come and say Charles took my money to anywhere because because that's and they, normal I'm, I'm lifestyle. Sure they, they play going somewhere to go and chill. <laughs> mm. Charles is only, I don't know how he does. Charles only chill, and I love him for that. So, but that's a different. One. Imagine me, give money unless you see me in Dubai. I'm not in Dubai, see so. I don't even want to give money. This guy is fantastic. It's just a whole lot. I wonder how we will be able to sell of this. I'm shop. telling oh, man. you. But that's why you should get the book before you say action. It's a book that was written with love. Yeah. With love. And I think I hope it changes. This book is for three people. One is for young filmmakers that want to grow in the industry. Two is for filmmakers that have been working and struggling and want to find the, how I made it. But three, for people who genuinely love this industry, want to invest in this industry but do not understand the workings. This book unmasks the entire industry for you. 
it shows you how this thing so you can learn what you want to do so thank you guys for watching today and thank you martin thank david you. thank we'll you, you. <laughs> peace out bye Thank you.